Creek kids, welcome to our Wednesday night session. So glad you could join us. Well, tonight we're going to have another Q&A time. That's question and answer time. But first, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we can meet online again. I pray that you bless every child, every person who's watching. May your words bring life to us today as we hear them, and may we be changed by them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, now it's time for question and answer time. Tonight we have a question from Titus. Let's listen. What does all the Passover food mean? What do all the Passover foods mean? Good question, Titus. Where are we going to go to find our answers? If you said the Bible, you are right. The Bible is God's word to us. And every word in the Bible is true. We can trust it. So we're going there for our answers. First of all, what is the Passover meal? The Passover meal is a celebration when Jews come together to remember how God freed them from slavery in Egypt. We read about it in the book of Exodus. Exodus is the second book in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and the word means exit because the Israelites exited out of Egypt. Many of you know the story of how Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, made the Israelites his slaves. In Exodus 1.14, it says, they, the Egyptians, made their lives, the Israelites, bitter with harsh labor in brick and mortar, that's cement um, made of lime and sand, and all, with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their harsh labor, the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. The Israelites cried out to God, and God sent them a deliverer. What was his name? Moses, right. Moses went to Pharaoh several times and told Pharaoh to let God's people go. Pharaoh said no over and over again, and each time he did, God sent a plague, a harmful consequence for Pharaoh's disobedience. The plagues included rivers turning to blood, massive invasions of frogs, gnats, flies, livestock killed, boils on people's skin, hail, locusts, darkness, and the last plague, number 10, when every firstborn son in every family, including livestock, was killed. In order to protect the Israelites from this last plague, God gave Moses specific instructions for the Israelites to follow in Exodus 12. Here are some of those instructions. Each man is to take a lamb for his family. Must be year old males without defect. Must slaughter them at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and the tops of the door frames of their houses where they eat the lambs. They were supposed to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. This is how you were to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. Hurry. That's what haste means. It's the Lord's Passover. Exodus 12, 21 to 23 says, Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, that's a plant, and dip it in the blood in the basin and put some of the blood on the top and sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the lamb to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame and will pass over that doorway and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. And that's what happened, kids. Every firstborn son and animal was killed that night, except for the homes that had the blood of the lamb on the sides and tops of the doors. After that last plague, Pharaoh let the Israelites go. So that's where the Passover meal comes from. Now let's look at the foods of a traditional Passover meal. This information is not from the Bible, but from Jewish tradition. To my right is a picture of a Seder plate, a plate used at a Passover meal. 
There's a lamb shank bone. Uh, that's the leg bone of a lamb. It represents the lamb that was killed. A hard boiled egg. Traditionally, hard boiled eggs were eaten by mourners, those who were sad. So it symbolized the Jewish people mourning the loss of their temple, their place of worship. Bitter herbs represent the bitterness of slavery. Charlset is a mixture of apples, nuts, wine, and spices. It represents the mortar, lime, and sand that Israelites used in constructing buildings during their slavery to the Egyptians. Of all the elements of the Seder, Charlset alone is sweet, and it's a reminder of the hope of redemption being set free. Carpus, usually parsley, is dipped in salt water and eat it, eaten. It represents the hyssop plant, and that was used to apply the blood of the Passover lamb across the door frames for the Israelites. The three pieces of matzah, which is a cracker-like unleavened bread, it had no yeast. It represents the bread the Israelites took with them when they fled Egypt. They were in great haste and therefore had no time to let their bread rise. Salt water was a symbol of the tears of slaves. And then wine. There were four cups. They represented what God promised to the Israelites. One, I will take you out. Two, I will save you. Three, I will redeem you. And four, I will take you as a nation. So now let's look at how the Passover event and some of the foods point to Jesus. And this info comes right from the Bible. So we know we can rely on it, it's true. First, let's look at the Passover event itself. The lambs that God instructed Moses to have killed were to be male and without defect. Jesus was male and without defect, without sin. The, lamb, the blood of the lamb applied on the doorposts protected the Israelites from death. The blood of Jesus shed for us on the cross protects us from death, eternal separation from God. 1 Peter 1, 18, 19 says that we were, we were, we were redeemed, set free with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Exodus 12, 46 says, um, do not break any of the bones. God instructed the Israelites to eat the lamb in a certain way. Do not break any of the bones. When Jesus was crucified, we, we read in John 19, 33, when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Remember the shank bone of the lamb? That's the leg bone. Pretty cool, huh? And we know that Jesus is the Lamb of God. John 1, 29 says, The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Carpus, the hyssop plant. In John 19, 28 to 30, it says this, Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. This is when he was on the cross. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it up to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now, matzah. I have a lot to talk about this item. <laughs> that was the unleavened bread, the bread without yeast. And yeast can represent sin. In 1 Corinthians 5, 6 through 7, Paul writes, Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. So matzah symbolizes sinless bread. Does that sound like Jesus? 1 Peter 2.22, he committed no sin. In John 6.35, 
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Wow. Also, look closely at the matzah. There are stripes. Those stripes could re represent his wounds, as we read in Isaiah 53, 5. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Also, the matzah is pierced. We know Jesus was nailed to the cross, Psalm 22, 16. They pierced my hands and my feet. Another very interesting thing is that the matzah is placed in a bag called an ehad, which means one in Hebrew. But this one bag has three chambers. Many Jews consider the three matzahs to represent Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But they cannot explain why they break Isaac in half. <laughs> as Christians, we can view this as the Trinity, the three chambers, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Son is broken half. As we read in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And isn't that cool? All those representations of Jesus in that matzah bread. And lastly, the wine. It represents redemption, being rescued and saved by the blood of Jesus and the new covenant. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In him, Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. In Luke 22, 20, it says, After the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The new covenant is the new agreement between God and mankind. In the old agreement, animals were sacrificed to provide forgiveness of sin. The new agreement is that Jesus was the sacrifice once and for all. Hebrews 10.10 10, And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So there you go, Titus. I hope that helps. Kids, be sure to send me your questions about God or the Bible if you have any. And be sure to check out the video about the Passover event. Now, I want to pray before we go. Father, thank you for sending Jesus, the Passover lamb, the lamb who took away our sin. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us, coming back to life. You are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through you. Thank you for giving your life for us so we could be free from sin and live forever with you. God, thank you for every child, every person watching. Bless them. Keep them healthy and strong, following close to you, that they listen to truth and not lies. In Jesus' name. So until we meet again, kids, stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay close to Jesus. He loves you so much. Bye-bye.
What is the most holy place in the world? Holland. With you, some of what some of the some of the stuff says. <laughs> You can also get this uh, faux in, in colors. This is a faux leather made of polyurethane. She has on that really cute flat red sheer blouse. Very cool right now. A 60s chain style belt, which is in. And that looks and feels really like real leather on the front of those jeans. In the red, that's Carrie. And then Carolyn is also wearing the same style jeans, but look at it in wow. green. Did you have any idea that this was the trend? No. Wow. Wild look. Look at this. 